the Madman. Welcome to Marvel Snap with the help of Nick Fury. I might give you the lowdown on how to play the game. Meet the team. Spider-Man, you're in. Hi, just gotta be home by nine. So, Snap's all about playing your cards onto locations. And then, you try to win the locations based on the power of your cards. There are six turns in each game. And your goal is to win two out of the three locations. After this? Most of their cards have special abilities, which you can find out by clicking on them. If your opponent played a card here, plus three power. So it's easy. All you have to do is play Star Lord, or you think the opponent will play. That's pretty interesting, because there's locations that show up throughout the game, uh, and they do very different things. You can click on those to also find out what they do. Cool, special abilities, special abilities. You can play your cards on different locations. Hawkeye uh, adds two power to the location you play on next, Medusa adds two power if you play her in the middle. Iron Man has a powerful ability. No kidding. Your total power is doubled at this location. Uh, that card makes it really hard for you to lose the location if you've committed to it already. Wakandan Embassy. Give plus two power to cards in other players' hands. In all players' hands. That's pretty good on Iron Man since uh, he doubles his power. I'll go ahead and play here because uh, that'll buff Hawkeye. So the goal is to hold two out of three locations to win. Uh, it's nice to win all three locations if possible, though. But sometimes you miss and then you only win two, which gives you enough to win. Next time, I'll try to break a sweat. When you win games, you're going to be able to upgrade your cards. You get the boosters, I should say. That'll allow you to upgrade your cards. And as you upgrade your cards, you upgrade your collection points. Upgrading your collection points will get you more cards. First, you get the frame break, and then you get the 3D. Woo, look at that. Hair. Glorious. The Punisher. So, uh, if you're familiar with Hearthstone, you'll be familiar with how the game works. But if you're not familiar with Hearthstone, simple enough, right? You start the game with one energy, and then each turn after that, you get an additional energy. Two energy on turn two, three energy on turn three. I would like to play Medusa in the middle square. You'll notice that didn't want to interrupt the use of that. You'll notice that each turn a location flips over. Uh, these locations are very game altering. Play Mr. Fantastic in the middle. He adds two to adjacent locations. So every single game of Snap. You're gonna get uh, three random locations, and that'll change up your strategy. So, no matter what your deck is, your strategy uh, will change a lot. For example, Xandar makes you want to play multiple cards there because uh, small cards, especially, because that's a greater ratio of power added per mana spent. The Vault. Uh, if you manage to secure that, it guarantees that you've won a location, so that's pretty useful. 
So every single location really changes up the way that you play and the way that everything is valued. Since the goal is to win two locations, uh, since I've basically secured the, the vault, uh, then, you know, just gotta win another one, and since Agatha has filled up the hub, uh, it'll be very difficult for her to beat my Hulk play there. I could even play Cyclops here! Cyclops. Uh, unfortunately you're useless, but you look so cool! Earlier that day. Is Cyclops Magma Rager? Magma Rager? Why would you play this card? And in that he's uh, like a terrible card, or in that <laughs> he's uh, uh, red, uh, or uh, what's the? Uh... What, all of the above, right? The cost three. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I, I play Cyclops in my uh, Patriot deck. <laughs> okay, bold of you to do so. <laughs> I missed your name. Sloth, is it? Do you lose all in all, Agatha? Upgrade Hulk. Ah! Early in the game, you unlock Sentinel. Did you know people in the early Marvel Snap community have already nicknamed me uh, Bolivar Trask? He's the good guy who uh, built all these Sentinels, you know. Uh, whenever you play a Sentinel, you add another Sentinel to your hand and then you can play more Sentinels and then add more Sentinels. This is a really good card that I think will stay with you for quite some time. Your new card is great. Shocker is not great. That's a 2-3 with no ability. Sentinel is a 2-3 with a really good ability. Your deck is incredible. Let's go. As you play games, you're going to upgrade your cards, and then you're going to upgrade your collection level. Uh, as you upgrade your collection level, you get a lot of cards initially, and then you start getting cards still pretty quickly after that, so it's very free-to-play friendly. Uh, as you get these cards, you're going to want to put them into your deck and then replace the less good cards because these cards are all quite a lot better than your initial cards. You're going to want to look at your missions and through the course of playing the game, you're going to complete these missions which will give you credits. When you complete daily challenges, which is completing two daily missions, then you're going to get one credit for your weekly challenge. Uh, complete three daily challenges in a week and you get this 200 gold reward. Complete six daily challenges in a week and you get 650 credits. Over at the shop, if you want to get cards faster, you can use fast upgrade to immediately upgrade cards. I will say this though, it seems like credits may be a limiting factor, so uh, just through the course of the game, perhaps, uh, you want to focus on upgrading cards which you've naturally gotten instead of like spending the extra credits to boost because you do need the credits to boost cards that you um, upgrade through actually getting the boosters through playing games as well. Don't forget to buy this 50 free credits each turn with zero gold. That's the value. And that resets every day. As soon as you can naturally upgrade these cards, uh, which is you've collected enough boosters for these, you're going to want to do so because you gain collection level and you don't have to pay the extra credits on top of the uh, fast credit reward option. Now that said, if, you have, if you're swimming in credits, feel free to fast upgrade, but you'll find that fast upgrading could end up costing a lot uh, when you're starting to upgrade the uncommons to the rares and certainly when you're upgrading the rares to epics. Over in the Season Pass screen, uh, this is the Recruit Season, this is what people will get when they first start playing. After you complete the 20 free ones, you start going to the actual Season, which you'll uh, get a Season Pass for. You can get a Season Pass for. Uh, you can see that there's going to be multiple card rewards down here. We got Ant-Man, a really good card. Uh, we got Ironheart, we got Gamora. These are all great cards that I'll be putting in pretty early. And at the end, you have the Value King Blue Marvel. Here's an example season pass. Now note that this is the beta, so uh, they noted specifically that the premium cost may not be this amount, but 
Uh, pro tip for free-to-play players is that the season pass is expected to have a good amount of spots where there's gold. So the gold will pay back a lot of whatever cost this ends up being. And you also get a bunch of credits. Uh, so what am I saying here? Well, you're going to want to accumulate your gold. Uh, so you don't necessarily want to actually just immediately swap your gold for credits. Instead, you want to save up the gold to get the season pass if you plan on playing a good amount. So I just claimed some portrait rewards over here on top. I can change my portrait to an appropriate portrait for me. Huh, which one is most appropriate for me? Obviously, Shang-Chi. It's because he counters cards, okay? As you collect your ranks, you'll get ranked rewards. Card backs, credits, boosters, gold, the infinite rank reward, a new avatar. Uh, these are per season, uh, which I believe is every month. After a few warm-up matches, you'll rank up, and then it's time to get into the real heart of Snap. Starting in Iron, you lose ranks. This is where the stakes get a little bit higher, so make sure you're prepared. So, as you get your new cards, you're going to want to replace these old ugh, Cyclops. And the thing, I suppose. Good old Kazar and Mr. Fantastic. Fantastic is fantastic. Ant-Man can come in for the Misty Knight. The early game chapters of the Season Pass missions are good at kind of guiding you towards where you should be as you're getting there. Uh, this wind with Spectrum starting in your deck happens to pop up at a convenient time around where you should start getting Spectrum. Uh, and Spectrum's a pretty decent card early, where you have a bunch of ongoing cards. I'll toss the Quicksilver out for a Spectrum. Tossing Hawkeye for, not for Nightcrawler. And I managed to unlock Colossus on the uh, Recruit Season track. He's got a ongoing ability, so I'll also toss a Colossus in for Star-Lord, I suppose. Alright, now that you're Iron Rank, whoever loses will actually lose a cube. This makes things much more exciting now, doesn't it? And I see I've got Sentinel in my hand, so it's time to uh, get my namesake. Uh, uh, my nickname is Boulevard Trask, as you know, and I'm here to crank out some Sentinels. If you curve out with Sentinel, you can go turn 2 Sentinel, turn 3, you could play a Sentinel on a 1-drop, turn 4, you could play a Sentinel on a 2-drop. Uh, Sentinel is just a really good, fills out your curve. On turn 5, all cards have to be played here. Uh, plan to play Iron Man here and then finish off with a 6-drop somewhere. Of course, shocker! Uh, a lame villain is going to skip his turn 5 by uh, putting all these cards on the must-play on turn 5 spot. The cubes you'll win or lose double after turn 6 if you think you'll re lose, retreat, but you got this, of course. Look at shocker's terrible plays. So, like I mentioned, Snap, at its heart, has a lot to do with the fact that the games are not always equal. Uh, if a game ends before turn 6, then there's only one cube difference, but if you let it go all the way until turn 6, uh, the cubes will double. And on top of that, there's a Snap mechanic, which we're going to go into very shortly. <laughs> Shocker, you suck so much. I won three locations against you. Ooh, 
Oh, how unlucky. I drew a rock. Subterranea. Shuffle five rocks in each deck. It's a rough location. Uh, it really changes up um, who's winning and losing depending on who draws more rocks. And looks like I am the rock drawing master. There are some locations in the game that can really adjust the RNG. Uh, it's the car! Put a card from each player's hand here. I got a rock. Death got a Hulk! So lucky! You're confident? Your opponent is confident they snapped. They should be. I got a rock. And they got Hulk. I drew two rocks off of Subterranean. Cubes you are battling over will double. Retreat before you are playing for double. That's a great idea. So if I were to let this go, then the stakes would be worth uh, two. And then if I were to retreat after that, I'd have to pay two cubes. And if the game went on to the very end, the cubes would double again, which would make me lose four. That's insane. I better retreat. That may feel really bad that I drew two rocks, and it may feel really bad that the uh, Sakara gave me a rock and them a Hulk, but that's part of the game, that's part of the skill of the game. You have to make these choices, uh, then you can minimize your losses of cubes and maximize your gains of cubes. Uh, cubes are basically the ranked elo system. Uh, you're ranked based off of how many cubes you have. So you can actually rank up with a negative win rate as long as the games that you win are much more impactful than the games that you lose. Cards have negative power, so I don't want to put Ant-Man there. But Elektra, oh, Squirrel Girl there. Uh, I'm winning without even putting any cards there. Oh, more squirrels. It's a very dangerous uh, decision Elektra's made to uh, play into the unknown, but uh, because who knows what that location may be. Uh, your opponent's losing. Press your advantage, tap to snap. If they don't retreat, you can win double. Nice, negative zone. See, that's the danger of playing in the unknown. Uh, who knows what may happen. Also, you fill up your board, which means I know that I can always win here. Uh, so easiest snap of my life. Hence the, uh, hint this is, this is a scripted encounter. Electra's trying her hardest to lose. Now we go back to the first lesson here. Uh, if you think you're going to lose, you should definitely retreat. Uh, even though you're going to lose two cubes for retreating here instead of one earlier when I snapped, it's still good to retreat here before you lose four cubes. But surely Electra, you know, losing all these locations would retreat, right? Right? No! <laughs> Worst AI ever! This is just here to make you feel good. And to teach you about snapping. Uh, that's some big rewards. Four cubes for me. So, you see, this game was worth four times as much as the game I lost. So I could lose four of those games as long as I won one of these games. Uh, which means I would stay the same rank if I just had a 20% win rate. Snapping is a really, really big deal. And more on snapping if you want to watch my Broad analysis video where I uh, critique Broad's gameplay. Uh, the name of the game, Snap, is very aptly named because how good you are at snapping and responding to the opponent's snap will decide a lot on how you win, on top of, of course, how you play your cards and how you construct your deck. So, that's your crash course into Snap.